Kristen with Enlight Physical Therapy, and today we're here to talk to you about stress incontinence, which is a type of urinary incontinence. So oftentimes stress incontinence is when um, you leak when you're doing different activities. Sometimes it's as simple as coughing or sneezing or even laughing, and other times it's more when you're doing um, active exercise. So jumping or running and you get a little leak. It happens. I have been there. I am here for you. It is my mission to help empower as many active women as I can to reignite that love of life, to try to minimize and, and get rid of any shame or embarrassment, all the frustrations of things like that, you know, having to run to the bathroom or change your clothes, or all of a sudden you just you just kind of shut down and you leave whatever you were doing because of because of a little leak or, or a larger leak. It, it happens, it absolutely happens. So today I wanna cover five really simple exercises that you can do to help mitigate some of those issues, to help improve the strength and the tone of the pelvic floor so that things like that don't either don't happen at all or happen much less frequently. So the first exercise that we're gonna be talking about today, it's called fire hydrants. Think of a dog literally peeing on a fire hydrant. So you're in tabletop position, so your shoulders are right over your wrists and your knees are right under your hips. You want the tops of your feet on the ground and imagine kind of pressing all 10 toes into the mat or carpet or wherever you happen to be doing this exercise. Really, really grip the ground with your fingertips, okay? Pull your abdominals in, like you're trying to pull your belly button towards your spine, and also focus on trying to lift that pelvic floor, almost like you're trying to pick up a grape with your vagina. Yes, yes, I said it, vagina, get used to that. So you're here, engaging, pulling that belly button to the spine, lifting the pelvic floor. We're gonna lift one leg up off the ground, picture that dog peeing, and then slowly lower. It's all about control, slow movements, all about control. All right, so for number two, it's belly breaths. Breathing specifically into the belly, trying not to breathe into the chest. So you're gonna take one hand, place it right on that belly, one hand right up on the chest, okay? I kind of like to close my eyes and really kind of focus in for this exercise. Once again, we're pulling that the belly button back to the spine, lifting the pelvic floor, focusing on engaging, okay? So you're gonna take a breath in. You really wanna focus on just breathing into that bottom hand. As you breathe, you only want, like I said, you only want to move, you only want that bottom hand to move. You want that top one to stay nice and still. All right, so we're on to number three. Number three is bridges. So for this exercise, we want to be on our backs. So lying flat on your back, either on your yoga mat, on the carpet. You can even do this on the bed. The only thing about doing this exercise on your bed is it's soft. You don't get the same benefits, but it's still very helpful. So flat on your back, you want your feet and your knees hip width apart, okay? So just about the same distance apart as your hips, okay? Hands down by your sides. Pull those abdominals in, engaging the core, lifting that pelvic floor, trying to pick up that grape. You wanna squeeze your glute muscles, those butt muscles push up. Continue to engage, lifting that pelvic floor, engaging those abdominals. And then once again, focusing on control, slowly lowering. All right, everybody, number four is clamshells. So you're gonna be on your side, all right? You can either be up on your forearm like this or down kind of, you know, in, in this position or even here. Whatever, really whatever's comfortable. The biggest thing is that your knees are bent, okay, and your feet are in line, you want your feet in line with the rest of your body. Like if you drew a line from your the top of your head down to your feet, it would be right in that same line. So I'm gonna kind of be here because I feel like this is a little bit more comfortable. Your feet are gonna stay together and you're gonna lift this top knee up. And then again, control, 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 slowly lower. Okay, you can always add, if you have um, an exercise band, you can always put the exercise band around your thighs to make this a little bit more difficult. Engaging, pulling that belly button back to the spine, lifting that pelvic floor, slowly lifting up, really focus, focus, focus. 
and slowly lower, 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 lower. All right, everybody, last but certainly not least, the one that we all know and love, the one that if anybody says pelvic floor, usually this is the first thing that they think of, pelvic floor lifts or the Kegel exercise, okay? Trying to bring that pelvic floor up, engaging those muscles, okay? So for this one, you kind of need to visualize, you kind of need to imagine, because oftentimes when people try to engage their pelvic floor, they're actually kind of more bearing down instead of lifting up. So what we want to focus on is like try to imagine stopping the flow of urine. So you're in the car, that light turns red, you really need to pee, you got kids screaming in the back seat, and all of a sudden you're just you're just holding it, holding on to it and hoping and praying that light will turn green. Or um, like you're trying to stop the flow, stop gas. So, you know, trying to stop that fart. You're in a place and you know it'd be kind of rude, so you're holding it in and trying until you can get to the bathroom and, and let it loose. Um, and the one that I mentioned earlier, like you're trying to pick up a grape with your vagina. And there it is, the, the V word. You gotta get more comfortable with that, ladies. So, you can do this lying down. Generally, that's how I would recommend starting because it's the easiest position. You don't have to worry about enga really engaging much else. I'm gonna do it in sitting because it's a little bit easier. I feel less awkward talking when I'm sitting than when I'm lying down and you've got my head bent at an awkward angle. So just sitting, nice and easy, focus. Again, I kind of like to close my eyes because it kind of helps me block out other things around me. So you're just sitting and lifting up. Hold for about five seconds, and then once again, slowly release. It's all about control. That's what helps improve that tone, learning how to control the movement of those muscles, okay? Because you need to know how to engage and contract the pelvic floor, but you also need to know how to release and relax the pelvic floor. So I really hope those exercises were helpful. They really helped me when, when I was dealing with this same issue after I first had my son. So please go to the website in lightphysicaltherapy.com. There you can download the free ebook, which has these exercises, descriptions about them, as well as a little um, information about stress incontinence and what it is. There's also on the website a blog article about stress incontinence and urinary incontinence, which has even more information on it. So please, please, Go see, re, review those resources. They're there for you to help you because that's my goal. That's what I want to do. You shouldn't have to suffer from this. You shouldn't. Let's normalize the fact that it's not normal to be dealing with this. So please check those resources out. Also, if you're doing these exercises and they're either not helping or you feel pain or discomfort or you're not sure you're doing them right, please go see a pelvic floor therapist. It is absolutely helpful. They will get you where you wanna go. You shouldn't have to suffer with this. Let's let's get you back to enjoying your, your life, your time with your family, friends. Go travel the world, go run that marathon. We can do this. Let's get you there.